Hi, this is Tony Wade, the Compassionate Investor, and we're talking about transitional housing. Specifically, we're going to talk about what it is, we're going to talk about the pros and cons, and talking about how you select your niche. Now, as I said before, a boarding house and transitional house are two different things. So it's sort of funny when I talk to people, um, and because I've been doing this for so long, they're like, oh, can you teach me how to run a boarding house? Nope, I cannot because I have no desire to teach you how to run a boarding house. Uh, I can, but I don't. that's not what I choose to do. I like to do transitional housing because that's truly meeting the needs that I like to meet. And I'm going to sort of talk about how you can understand the difference. So a boarding house is basically still shared housing. They both are shared housing, but a boarding house is simply that. You got three rooms, you got three individual people living in it or four or five, however many you are permitted to have in that property. And then um, you share a kitchen and a bathroom or in a common area. That's a typical boarding house setting. Transitional housing is when you are providing wraparound services. You're providing things for individuals who are coming into your housing. To me, that's better. I'm not looking for people to just simply be in a long-term situation um, and to be even viewed like that. Because think about it too. The connotation even associated with the term boarding housing, I mean, it's like really bad. You sort of think slumlord. You think, um, you know, uh, you think of the negative side of shared housing. And I am not that. I'm truly transitional transitional housing. We have a nice home. We have nice homes that we utilize for people so that they can come in and get the things that they need and then transition out of that into something that's more permanent. And that's where my training kicks in, where I train people on sustainability, all those wonderful things. If you want to know more about that, go ahead and shoot me some comments at TonyTWade.com. I'd love to be able to talk to you more about that. But that is the difference between a boarding house and a transitional house. Now, I will say, for both, you will need to get permitted. You'll have to go to your city, wherever you're located, and figure out what requirements you have in your area. Here in St. Louis, I know very well, as it relates to boarding houses, if you have more than three individuals living in a house that are not related, you have a boarding house. And you're required to go get a platinum petition to get that qualified, because if you don't, they're going to shut you down. So I would encourage you, if you need more information and guidance on that, I can direct you, help give you some, some consulting for that piece if that's really what you want. But if you want transitional housing, that's another different layer because there's several different types of uh, transitional housing that you can get into. Um, you can get into housing that is more um, specific to individuals who are in recovery. You can get into housing that's related to people who are coming out of incarceration. You can even get into housing working with agencies. So depending on what it is that you like, those are some things that you would need to create some things around. And I've been doing this for the last 12, 13 years doing just that. Working with agencies, working with probation and parole, working with recovery so that we can truly get to a place of making change happen for individuals. So that's the type of stuff that we're talking about and that we help people get into. Now, let's talk about some pros and cons because there are some pros and cons to this. Most people like to focus on the pros, which is maximizing their rents because truly uh, a rent that you can get in a particular property um, compared um, on just regular market rent is significantly higher in a transitional housing or a boarding housing or shared housing model because you're going to get that amount for each room. So that is definitely a plus. Also, if you are looking for um, some housing can actually give you long term tenants that are with you on a long term basis versus, you know, they're just there for a moment. It just depends on how you structure it. Um, I can tell you honestly, since I've been doing this, I've got people who've been with me probably seven years or more in that same property doing the same thing because that's the type of housing that they like. And I'm not mad that they like it as long as we can follow the things that we put in place because we have specific guidelines and requirements that everyone must follow in order to keep things moving. Those are things that I can teach you if you consult with me um, so that you can be equipped to be able to run your own housing as well. Now, another pro, of course, is being able to help people transition 
into a better situation. That's why I prefer transitional housing because I'm truly helping someone get to another stage in life. Because guess what? Stuff happens to people all the time. And if you need somebody to sort of hold you up for a moment until you can get through that, I'm that person who can do that. Um, being able to allow someone just simply to pay $500 a month, all utilities included, and, and participate in some wraparound services, the needs that they, they need, they're getting from us as they are then getting ready for the next level, that's the type of stuff I love because I truly feel that I'm making a difference. And that's why I like transitional housing way better. And those are some of the pros. But guess what? There are some cons. And you must be fully prepared for them. Uh, the biggest one that I'm going to say, there's several, but I don't know if there's one bigger than another, but you are paying additional overhead. So where you're typically just renting um, or, or you're renting out to people and doing market rent, your overhead's not as high. We have to provide and pay for utilities. We set up furniture. Sometimes we provide things in there that help make their lives easier. That's a part of overhead as well as the training that all of those things play a part in overhead. So you have more overhead costs associated with it. But when you look at the scheme of how much you get coming in and that overhead and I'll go through some examples of what that looks like later you'll really say yep that is really worth it so you definitely want to look at that another thing that you're going to run into is you're dealing with people that don't know each other so you'll probably have more issues versus a family that lives together and knows each other you're going to have more issues so there's going to be nuisances you might get those on your property that is a big thing that you need to be prepared for if you get into this because once you get on somebody's nuisance list Oh, they're about to try to get you out of that property very quickly. So you do not want to do that. Setting it up proper and in order is critical to avoid that particular con. And then I'll also talk about selection. Because when I first got into this, I'm telling you, it was not pretty. Um, the selection process was so hard, but I've created such a systematized process for being able to select and screen people. I can look and talk to you after five questions. I know whether you're going to be good or not good to be in our transitional housing. And that's the stuff I bring to uh, my students who are with me in consulting so that they can be good at making those selections as well. And then you've got that do it yourself trial and error, like I was talking about, because if you you're doing it yourself and just going through that motion, that's a con within itself. Many people who have come to me and said, Tony, I really want to do this. You know, I want you to consult me. And when I tell them how much I charge for consulting, because my consulting is not cheap, but you're going to do it once. After you do it once, you can then do it in as many properties as you need to. So I've had people who come to me and they bark at the price and they go away. And a year later, they're coming back to me wanting me to buy the property that they tried to do because they failed at it. And that's just a part of, of the beast of it all. So I want to encourage you as you listen to these areas, um, definitely consider where you see yourself in this transitional housing, shared housing model, because it doesn't fit for everybody and you need to make the best decisions for yourself. Now, I will say in the next segment, we're going to really get into a little more deeper com 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 comments and, and, and com com issues get me all tongue twisted. I'm so excited. I can't talk, but getting you some more information on transitional housing. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 